Welcome to the weekly share of the share of Zera Shimshon. This is uh, Parshas Bolak, and we're doing it in the Eli Nishmas of Chaim Ben Atar, whose yards it is today, Arab Shabbos. And also the, uh, to help those people that are Chisule Banim, if they don't have children. It's a shame we have all those people in mind that really need desperately to have our help, have Hashem's help. <coughs> So this is from Parshas Balak. It says, "Es Asher Tevorach, Mevorach, Es Asher Asher Toar." You are those that you will be will that they will bless are blessed, and whom you will curse will be cursed. Why does the verse switch from present tense to future tense? He says, "Mevorach are blessed till you are you will 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 be cursed." So. When Moshe Rabbeinu first meets with Hashem, he asked how he will be able to convince the Jewish people that he is the one who has been sent by Hashem to lead them out of Eden, that's right, and what he should use as a sign. Hashem instructs Moshe to put his hand into his cloak. He put his hand into his bosom. When he withdrew it, and behold, his hand was leprous, it was white as snow. Okay, Rashi points out that when it came to healing his hand, the Torah writes, he withdrew it from his cloak and it became again like the rest of his flesh, which implies that it had already been healed even before he removed it from his cloak. Rashi explains that the reason had this occurred is because good tidings come faster than bad ones. Therefore, Hashem gave him tzoras only after he removed his hand from his cloak. Hmm. But when it was time for Hashem to restore his hand to its original healthy condition, it happened much faster. Done. It's the same here that says there, Shimshon. When it comes to giving someone a bracha, in this case, when Bilam blessed the Jews, the bracha occurred immediately. Mivorach, being present, present tense. However, when the Torah is referring to Bilam cursing the Jews, it says, you are. You are, the curse will happen in the future. But maybe it will, and maybe it won't. <laughs> this is why the verse switches from present to future tense. That's from the Zerah Shimshon and Ois Aleph. Okay, now the Segula for today is <clears throat> both Bilam and Balak hated the Yidden intensely. Hate is a powerful weapon and causes terrible damage to those at whom it is aimed. Yet the same at the same time, the hate will rebound at the hater and will hurt him too with equal power. As in everything in life, hate has a counterbalance. And in this case, the counterbalance I'm referring to is the power of love, which has the power to achieve incredible results. I'm having trouble here with this. So speaking of love and mysterious nefesh for Klai Yisrael, I want to tell you about a Magid Shir who... Delivers a, delivers a weekly shear in Zerah Shimshon and what and the incredible and serious nefesh he exhibits to do never miss a shear no matter what. There's no question that his behavior stems from a tremendous sense of love to, for those who attend his shear and who receive chizuk from the Torah he teaches them on a regular basis. The weekly shear takes place in a shul called Hart Svi in the Geula section of Yerushalayim. <clears throat> One week this Magid Shir decided to take his family to Tzfas for an extended weekend vacation. Wanting to maximize their time up north, his family decided to leave for Tzfas on Thursday morning. <clears throat> he couldn't go with them since he didn't want to miss giving his Zer Shimshon Shir. He therefore decided that he would leave for Tzfas on the last bus of the night, which was slated for departure around 11 o'clock that evening. Taking that particular bus meant that he wouldn't be sleeping much that night, but he didn't want to miss the shir and was already was ready to be Meiser Nefesh a little bit for the schus. It was Bein Azmanim, and there were lots of people at the bus stop, all of them anxiously awaiting to board. Same bus. But the same, by, the same, by the time every suitcase and hat box and stroller had been stowed beneath the bus, and every single person was finally on board, 11 o'clock was long gone. It was already past midnight. He was utterly exhausted even before the bus finally hit the highway. 
but there were a few hours to go before they'd get to Svas, and he would see a bed. The ride actually took longer than he had anticipated and was only reached the serenely peaceful streets of the holy city of Svas at 4.30 in the morning. After a brief stop at the outskirts of Meiron, he alighted at the last stop in the city. He was the only person left standing on the dimly lit road, trying to get his bearings after dozing on and off for the last couple of hours. He was really looking forward to joining his family at the apartment and catching some sleep before davening. To his great chagrin, this was not to be, since his suitcase was missing from the luggage compartment beneath the bus. In the darkness, someone had taken his suitcase. Now he was left standing in the middle of the night in major trouble. His children were in the suitcase, as were his Shabbos clothes. He stood there on the street corner for about a minute, his thoughts whirling through his mind. Shabbos Nachamu was that evening, and as things stood right then, he was going to welcome the Shabbos queen wearing his weekly clothing. Worse than that, what about davening in the morning? The Magashir was then struck by a horrifying thought. His name was nowhere to be found in that suitcase. His tefillin bag had his initials embroidered into it, but not his name. There was nothing in the suitcase that gave any hint as to who he was. It was a catastrophe. He contemplated that his cell phone, as his cell phone rang, and he, as he contemplated that thought, his cell phone rang. He answered the phone, and a man on the other end said, Excuse me, but did you by any chance leave your suitcase in Mayron? How did you find my suitcase? It's like this, the man explained. I got off the bus in Mayron, planning to take a taxi from there to Afula, where I live. As I was about to get into the taxi, I took another look at my bag, and I realized it wasn't mine. As soon as I saw that I had made mistakenly take someone else's bag, I asked one of my friends who was staying in Mayron if I could leave your suitcase with them, and he <clears throat> agreed. Now all you need to do is go to Mayron and pick it up. And while I'm very sorry that I took your suitcase, suitcase by mistake, I'm happy that I realized my error before the taxi left Mayron for Ofula, because otherwise things would have become much more complicated. Wait a second, the Magashir said. How did you find my phone number? I'm always positive that I didn't leave any identifying information in the suitcase. There was one tiny piece of paper that was folded over and pushed way down into your jacket pocket. What did it say? It said that I would there would be a shear in the heart Sri Shul, and it said the name of the Magid Shear along with the, his phone number. My friend noticed that the initials of the Magid Shear were the same as those on the Talis Bay. Figuring that it was the same person, I called. He called to give me the number, even though it was the middle of the night, so I could let you know that your suitcase was safe and sound, and that you could pick it up in the morning, which he did taking a bus to Davin Shachris at the Kever of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai in Miron. When reflecting on what happened to him that night, the Magad Shir felt that Zerah Shimshon had been on his side through the trials of a journey that seemed to never end, enduring that someone, ensuring that someone who had been Meister Nefesh to teach his Torah would not end up suffering as a result. Have a wonderful Shabbos. I get the, and the good Shabbos and I have the the, the, all the blessings of the Archaim Kodesh on your head. Call to.